One of the excellent new features in Premiere Pro CS6 is the ability to customize monitors, the program monitor, the source monitor, and the reference monitor. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to go to Working Files, go to the Projects folder, and open up 0306 Monitors. One of the goals that the interface designers had this go around was to give you more real estate, to show more of your project, so you could see your videos more clearly in larger displays. Thus, this two-up display, it's a much better way to look at your videos. The other part of that was to change the way that these monitors work to let you see even more real estate. Right now, a lot of real estate is taken up by these transport controls down here. And you can remove those transport controls or at least edit what's available down there. I want to work, though, in the source monitor because that's the one that you'll work with in most when you use transport controls. So I'm going to add a clip to the source monitor. Go down here to Scenic Clips. Scroll down a little ways to one where I know it's relatively quiet, like Scenic Number 5. And open up that guy there. What I want to do is talk about these transport controls. Now, most of these things you can manipulate with keyboard shortcuts. And at some point as we go through this course, you're probably going to say, you know, I'd rather use keyboard shortcuts than click on buttons. And at that point, you may want to just get rid of these transport controls. But in the interim, let me show you how you can customize the transport controls. I'm going to click on this little button editor button here that opens up the button editor. This lets me add buttons or remove buttons. So I'm going to add a bunch of buttons here. I'm going to start by adding the Safe Margins button. And if I put it here in the top row, then I get a little chevron on the right-hand side there. See the little guy just hovering off to the right down by the plus sign? That means I'm going to have to click on that chevron to access buttons that are off the edge. I'll put in a couple here to show you what that does. Add that one. I'll add the Clear In point here next to the In point there. I'll add the Clear Out next to the Adding an Out point button over there, something like that. And let's put a couple down on the bottom here as well. I'm going to add the go to the previous marker, go to the next marker. And now we're done, although this is not exactly what I would call an ideal layout, but we're done here for our purposes. And I click OK. What happens now, you get all these buttons, which take up even more real estate, which is something I really don't want to do, but I do want to show you how to do this. I also get this little chevron over here that says you've got more buttons that don't show up here, so click on me. You can see the buttons that are missing that you can't see that kind of go off the edge here. So all said and done, I really don't want to do it this way. So I'm going to go back and click the button editor again. And I can remove buttons. I can just drag them above this little line here, right up into that little workspace there, and they go away. And if I really want to get back to square one, I just click on Reset Layout, and it takes out those guys that we added in this top row. Now I click OK, and great, we're back to where we started. But my goal here is I want to eventually get rid of these buttons. I don't want to see them at all. And the way I do that is I learn the keyboard shortcuts. Now, I'm not going to tell you all the keyboard shortcuts now, but just keep in mind that over the course of this course, you might learn most of those keyboard shortcuts such that you're going to get rid of this transport control. Let me introduce you to some keyboard shortcuts. If you want to play a clip anywhere here or here down in the timeline, just press the space bar. Whichever panel is active, well, then we'll play that clip. If I press the space bar again, it stops. If I press J, K, or L, they too control the transport. K is stop, L goes forward. If I press it again, it goes faster. Faster still, if I press it again, K stops. J goes backwards. J again goes faster. J again goes faster still, and then K stops. So that's one way to manipulate things. If I want to put in an endpoint, I just move it to someplace where I want to put the endpoint, right there, let's say. I press the I key, that puts in an endpoint. If I want to put in an out point, that's the letter O, quite simple, right? If I want to jump to the endpoint, that's Shift I. Jump to the out point, that's Shift O. So those things are pretty obvious. If I want to go forward one frame, that's the right arrow key. Go back one frame, left arrow key. If I want to go back a lot, I just hold down those keys, and then we just kind of zip through there a little bit at a time. So that's how you can use some keyboard shortcuts. And those guys really cover all of these keyboard shortcuts here. This last one's the marker, which is the M key. And this is called an insert, and this is called an overwrite. They, too, are fairly simple. It's comma and period. The only kind of complex keyboard shortcut is exporting a frame. Control Shift E in Windows, Command Shift E in Mac. That's probably the one thing that you wish was an easier keyboard shortcut. But in any event, you may want to get rid of the transport controls altogether someday. And there are two ways to go about doing that. You can click on this little wrench here, go to the settings. Down at the bottom here, there is this little line that says Show Transport Controls. If you uncheck it, they'll go away. Or you can access that menu with a few other features by going to the panel menu. Every panel has a panel menu here. Whatever panel is active, then the panel menu is up right here, and that shows the same things we saw before, plus a few other odds and ends. 
So I'm going to uncheck Show Transport Controls, and they are gone. Now what's missing here are numbers. You don't see any timeline numbers. Over here you see the numbers, but you don't see them here inside this monitor, and that's by default. If you want to see numbers, you can change that by going up here again and saying Time Ruler Numbers, and then they show up here. But you know, you probably don't need the numbers so much as you just need to be able to see what's going on up here by looking at these numbers. This number on the right says how long the duration of the trimmed clip will be. If I clear those in and out points by right clicking and saying clear in and out, then this thing says how long the full length of the full clip is, which is 15 seconds and 16 frames. And this time code comes from this stock footage that was provided to us by Digital Juice. It relates to how they originally shot this footage. But do you need these numbers down here? Probably not, not really. So you get rid of them. They kind of clutter things up, although they don't take up any space. And to go back to the default setting, just go over here and uncheck the time ruler numbers. Now, any changes you make to the program monitors are not part of your workspace. If you've saved the workspace or you're working in a particular workspace, these guys will always show up like this. If you open up a new project, you will retain this look. These are saved with the program, not with the project. So you can have the monitor set up like this. You can have this monitor set up differently. You can go to the reference monitor and you can set it up differently too. Let's say we'll get rid of the transport controls for it by going to this little menu here or going to the settings menu and we'll turn off the transport controls. When you're done here and come back to Premiere Pro, even with a new project, you'll see it look like this. If I change the workspace, let's say to a color correction, which includes the reference monitor. The reference monitor, you'll notice, has no transport controls. The source monitor has no transport controls, but the program monitor does, which is how we left things a moment ago. So the monitor changes. The monitor customization does not show up in the workspace. This is set within the program. So that's how you customize your monitors. The big thing is that you can get rid of the transport controls if you choose. And if you have a lot along the side here, you've got this little chevron that tells you you've got more off to the right. But at some point, you might want to get rid of all the transport controls and just rely on keyboard shortcuts.